Good morning. I'm delighted to be here. I'm Harmony Bench. Um, I really, really, really wanted to go off script, but five minutes is real and it's intimidating. So um, I'm going to read. <laughs> um, actually, I don't know. Keyboard, great. PC is not really my, my thing. OK, so my, my home discipline is dance studies, where one of the things that scholars tend to focus on is cultural representation in choreographic works uh, made for the stage. And one of the reasons that we do this is because of artists like Ruth St. Dennis and Ted Sean, who together formed a dance company known as Dennis Sean, which lasted from 1914 to 1931. Participating in the era's hallmark cultural exoticism, the artists devoured and then stitched together images, themes, gestures, movements, costumes, and musics from anthropological texts and photographs, personal observation, as well as their own creative imagination. As biographer Jane Sherman remarks, Denishan programs became so popular because they gave people total theatrical experiences that exposed them to hitherto unfamiliar cultures. Now, the bulk of Denishan's work was performed on the popular stage at a time when this was at a very important venue for American audiences to conceive of themselves uh, as participating in a broader world. For obvious reasons, see here on the screen, uh, dance scholars such as uh, Priya Srinivasan, Jacqueline Shea Murphy, and others have emphasized how the artist's whiteness functioned to legitimize their onstage transformations of material influenced by or appropriated from people of color. My own inquiry takes these culturally and politically informed analyses of choreographic works as foundational and further considers the broad dissemination of these representations made visible through my, di my digital humanities project, Mapping Touring. Um, and this project uh, is in process, and it shows uh, the geographic distribution of early to mid 20th century ballet and modern dance uh, touring in order to understand repertory in the context of its circulation and to demonstrate the intertwining of globalization and aesthetic modernism in dance. As Jonathan Bolin remarks in his analysis of data models for theatrical research, this work cannot reveal what happens inside a performance, but can be used to reveal the connections among performances. And in particular, for my purposes, the connections that I'm interested in are between performance and place. And for the sake of time, I've only, uh, I just have this one image to kind of stand in for the whole. Um, but what we see, for example, is that despite uh, what we might assume, I think, reasonably to be quite disparate audiences in their 1924-25 tour, Denishan performed many of the same works in Billings, Montana and Birmingham, Alabama, as in San Francisco and New York City. These included not only a variety of waltzes and Americana, but also the dance of the black and gold sari, quadro flamenco, and Balinese fantasy pieces that were developed and performed without first-hand knowledge of the cultures on display, but which were also uh, informed by the enduring presence of an international roster of performers touring the U.S. During their so-called Far East tour uh, the following season, and this was the first time that they really were directly interacting with the cultures um, that they had made a business of portraying, um, Denishan performed these very same dances that they had toured throughout the U.S. and Canada. Nevertheless, mapping touring, which enables comparison from tour to tour and location to location, reveals some interesting choices in the artist's selection of repertory. And just as a side note, I want to point out um, that the data set for mapping touring is largely uh, manually curated from undigitized sources. It tracks uh, dates of performances, the cities and venues in which artists appeared, and the repertory performed, specifically for the purpose of spatial and comparative analysis. And what's really great about mapping touring, which you can't see here, but this is actually a screenshot of an animated route map so you can see the tour unfold um, in, in sequence uh, and then you can click on each of the points to reveal one of these panels that will give you further information. Um, so interesting choices include uh, Denishan did not perform spear, spear dance Japonesque while in Japan or Kuan Yin Chinese goddess while in China though they did perform these works elsewhere in Asia. Denishan also continued to develop repertory informed by the places where they performed, such as Sta uh, Sean's statuesque solo, The Cosmic Dance of Shiva, as well as St. Denis's A Javanese Court Dancer. 
that St. Denis premiered her volcano-themed A Legend of Pele in Japan suggests that they also observed the traffic of people and ideas around the Pacific Rim, which they reflected back to their audiences, the Pele reference obviously being to um, Hawaii and the, um, uh, the goddess Pele. In short, Den and I'm sorry, it's really short. It's really fast. I got to be fast. Uh, so in short, uh, Dendeshan employed dance as a means of archiving global gestures in and through the body. As they traveled, they collected movements, musics, and motifs alongside more tangible props and costumes, which they composed into new repertory and disseminated while on tour throughout Asia, as well as upon their return to the United States. And mapping touring shows us how far these representations circulated as part of an early 20th century American global imaginary. Thank you. <laughs>